Thank you for joining us. Now, police in the eastern region say they have charged 21 suspects who were arrested during the shootout between them and illegal miners at Asamama with causing destruction, among others. The 21 persons were remanded into police custody yesterday when they were sent to court. While the police say two people were killed and dozens others injured during the gun battle between members of the anti galamse Security Task Force and some illegal miners at Asamama last week, some residents say they retrieved 13 dead bodies. Regional Police Commander DCOP Peter King Yen Tumijinai spoke to me earlier on News Desk. They were charged with various offences. So various offences. Such as what? You, you mentioned illegal mining and what yes, again? illegal mining, causing damage, and, and, and yeah. conspiracy, and a few others. We know that 22 people were arrested during the swoop last week. What happened to the other one? The one was uh, uh, granted bail by the court. Now, what about the site where the illegal miners were? Is there, uh, do you have policemen guarding the place to prevent them from going back? We can't have policemen to guard the place. We don't have enough policemen to do that. But uh, we, we do patrols to the area. Patrols, how often do they go there? Because I think that one of the main uh, responsibilities of the anti galamse Tax Force is to ensure that places such as where those people were are not, you know, uh, mined. Illegal miners are not there. Well, that is up to the Tax Force, which, of course, I'm not part of. But uh, our team, we have policemen who do patrols around the place since that uh, the incident. We know that after this incident, a lot of the residents were afraid and, you know, some of them were unsure what could happen next. What is the situation in the town now? Uh, for now, the, the, the situation is calm. But I don't, I don't see why they should be afraid because they were not part of the operation. We, the, the operation was with security, between security and Galantia. So I don't see why people in the town. Meanwhile, the traditional authorities in Asamama have condemned the violence that occurred last week, calling for a full-scale investigation into the matter. Latif Idris joins me in the studio with details of a statement issued a while ago. Latif, what more is in this particular statement? Yeah, the statement essentially is to condemn the illegal mining activities that have been taking place over the past decades in Asamama. I would like to read portions of the press statement uh, it says, the print and electronic media has over the last three days been inundated with stories about the violent clashes that occurred at Asamama in the Tiwa district of the Eastern region. Let me jump. Uh, the Asamama too wishes to state that the reports circulating contain factual inaccuracies and as such wants to set the record straight. I also want to state that I am issuing this press statement for and on behalf of the Asamama too on the authority of Osabarima, Dr. Adade Boatin II, chief of Asamama. About one month ago, now, now you're Give going to tell us exactly. What happened. exactly. Okay. About one month ago, it came to the attention of the chief and elders that certain persons have brought and mounted mining equipment known as Chamfan on a portion of the Burem River within the Asamama stool land. As a matter of explanation, the Chamfan is a dredging equipment mounted on normal barrels to enable it float on water. It dredges the river bed proper and washes the residual water back into the water channel after the gold has been extracted. The effect of the above is that the use of chamfan causes irreversible havoc of gargantuan proportion to our cherished Birim River and associated water bodies. Upon receipt of the report about the influx of chamfan operators in Asamama, I made an oral report to the district police commander at Kwabeng. The district commander indicated to me that he had taken notice of my complaint and that action will be taken on same in due course. After waiting for over two weeks without a positive response and action by the district police commander at Kwabeng, I filed on behalf of the stool a formal complaint by way of a letter dated November 8, 2016 to the Regional Security Council at Koforidia. In the said letter, I requested for assistance in dealing with the menace of illegal mining through the cooperation of the Chamfan within Asamama's two lands. Now, the RECSA carried out its own investigation, and having appraised itself of the situation on the ground, RECSA authorized the police soup during which the unfortunate incident mm. occurred. 
So that's the history there. But Latif, exactly. we didn't know in your first report, you talked about the Queen Mother making this uh, report to the police, filing this complaint, and I think it's even clearly stated exactly. in here. Are the authorities satisfied? Is there anywhere in this statement that the officials, the traditional authorities, mm -hmm. say they are satisfied with what the police have done so far? They back the action of the police, but you and I know that they didn't sanction this whole movement to go and kill the illegal miners. The whole plan was to go arrest and then seize the machines, the Chamfan machines. But then the situation got out of hand and then uh, fatalities were recorded. For that, the traditional authorities are condemning that act. Mm. But for the main action of going there to clamp down on Galamse operators, yes, the traditional authority, they are for it because they think that this is causing havoc to the water bodies in, in the Samama traditional area. Thank you very much, Latif Idris. Let's move on to other stories. And job creation appears to be the major decider of a choice of the parliamentary candidate in a Wutu Senya constituency in this year's polls. In today's constituency diaries, my colleague Francis Aban visits that constituency, which has been monopolized by the governing National Democratic Congress for years. With a seeming fierce battle between the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hannah Tete, and marketing guru, George Anda, a new wave of politics is taking root in Ewutu Senior, questioned the Hannah George contest. Constituents have been outlining key issues which will influence their choice of parliamentary candidate in the next administration. <laughs> <laughs> Felix and Bismarck are locals in Eutu. Pensive about the stakes going into this year's parliamentary elections. But in the Eutu Senya West constituency, the stakes are high and sometimes feed into conversations which easily turn into heated arguments. <laughs> It has been christened the Hannah George contest with a little over 70,000 votes up for grabs. The constituency is predominantly rural with towns like Ewutu, Senyabriku and Bodriasi being the most dense with thousands of votes. This is arguably the most heated contest for the seat since the year 1996. The NDC has enjoyed monopoly of the seat winning five times with the MPP riding their luck once in 2004. In 1996, Babalami Abu Sadat beat the MPP's Haruna Iseku by over 9,000 votes. In the year 2000, Hanatete Koda took over the baton from the incumbent MP and beat the MPP's John Kojo Aka with the vote difference of 6,174. Then onwards to the 2004 elections and the MPP, after two times of asking, won the parliamentary seat. Ope Abe won, beating the NDC's Moses Ahenfo Aqua with over 13,700 votes difference. In 2008, the NDC fielded a new candidate, David Nanalabi, who took back the seat from the sitting MPP MP in a close race with 2,337, the difference. 2012 saw the comeback of one-time MPs. Hana Tete had to fend off competition from Ope Abe, winning 23,032 votes as against the MPP's 18,487. So... Can Hannah Tete be third time lucky, or will George Under seek to break the NDC's winning formula? Meet Amadonko, a native of Ewutu. Mm. 
Kwame Nguma na brodo na na mamu wa wom. Na be. Me nyim me twa hie. Mhm. Ndiri wa mamu wa ngba ma me ntimi nyim. Ntinyim. Mpote ade. Na ibi njuma na ye. Pote me ade njuma. Na me ye zo la nso. The farmer has been a passionate supporter of the NDC, and this time is no different. What strengthens her resolve is what she describes as the undue attack on the personality of Hannah Tete. What's it I am Amadonko. I don't know my age. I work for the government and Zoom Lion. I don't like the manner in which they attack her personality and arguing about whether she comes from here or not. She hasn't finished her work, but I have hope and I'll vote for her to enable her to finish the work. Okay. Okay. And her view represents that of most women I interacted with in the township. Kweku is the owner of a popular drinking spot in Breku, Fresh One. At the entrance of the bar, a signboard with the inscription, Change has happened in USA, change is coming to Ghana greets you but his political measuring rod is an interesting one <laughs> Oh, first in the Navy, you have between your hundred Ghana City, the Bazi City, the Bio Hawk crowd, twenty Ghana City crowd, Minya, in Yabi, in Yabi. Okay. Now, what shall we buy her? Actual change in USA, change in Ghana, a year MPP, and then who may be a mifri. Some actual Damukuti, then who may be a mifri. Maybe I'm a mifri, and Tina Macho, the Madame MPP, the men, your pulley agent, your pulley agent, pulley agents have dwindled, and I don't get the money I want. I support the MPP. George will win. Hannah's work has not been impressive over the period. Recruitment, no, Hannah, man, Hannah, so what at him? Um, Nedma, you say, Papa, ha. Busum, I think I'll buy about two abbey and all about. I'll buy a horsey. Wait to your school fees. And so, your whole school fees are what you are my mouthful. But Uncle George did it. Fair funeral, Baba. Fair now, Dory, Baba. And yes, you know, I can come, I can't mess yet to abandon the mana. Oh, baby, Papa, ma. I then proceeded to Brekuzongo to see if the views are divergent. Let me start with you, sir. What's your name? My name is Kwesi Tamagro. And you are? I'm an NDC party member. NDC party member. How long have you been an NDC party member? Oh, for a long time. Let me say around 2008. Okay. So you voted in 2008? Yeah. You voted 2012? Yeah. Okay. What about you, sir? Yeah, my name is Abraham. Abraham. I'm called Mandule. Mandule? Yeah. Okay. You also NDC? Yeah, also NDC. NDC. Yeah. When was the last time you voted? Oh, like 2002, 2006, 2008. Oh, I voted for NDC. I see. All right. What about you, gentlemen? Uh, your name? Uh, Autu Kotoko. Kotoko. Autu Kotoko. Yes. Is that your name? My name is Abraham, but the guy name is Autu Kotoko. Okay. And you are what? Oh, my name is MPP. Your name is MPP? Yeah. The party I joined is MPP. I see. Yeah. How long have you been supporting the party? Oh, about more than about 12 years. 12 years? Yes. Did you vote in 2008? Oh, I voted. 2012? I, I yes, too. Okay. okay. What about you? My name is Daniel. Daniel. Daniel Ford. Daniel, what do you do? Are you a student? Are you a worker? What do you do? No, I, no I'm working. I'm working. You're working? Yeah. What, what kind of employment are you in? Let's say driving work. Let's say driving work. Yeah, I like okay. driving work. Okay. Gentlemen, let me have the two of you join me now. Let's have a very quick conversation. So for you, you represent the NDC, you represent the MPP. Let's, let's focus on the parliamentary elections. Mm -hmm. How do you fancy Hannah Tete's chances in this year's elections? Oh, Hannah Tete, uh, what I see is Hannah Tete will win this election. Why do you say that? One touch, because Hannah Tete has done a lot of work in this community. What has she done? Oh, she done a lot. She done a lot. 
Like what? Point me to some schools, mm -hmm. schools and roadies. Let me say road. Mm -hmm. And after that, she do a lot. She do a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you, sir? What? What? And you're watching news today on Johnny's Your Election Headquarters. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly with more. watching news today on journeys now the opposition NPP is accusing government of hiding behind an agreement with a UK based company to siphon funds for the NDC campaign in the name of supplying national security equipment addressing a news conference here in Accra former general secretary of the NPP John Kwejo Owusu Efriye said the 300 million dollar agreement was just one instance of improper deals government has entered into in recent times, all with the aim of raising funds for the president's re-election. He's also accusing government of colluding with PRC to inflate prices of some boreholes being drilled from a possible 18,000 to 60,000 cities. My colleague Joseph Akable is currently covering that press conference. He joins us live on the line. So Joseph, uh, what is necessitating these accusations in the first place? Uh, so the point that uh, John, um, like public calling, is making is that they have information that suggests that government has entered into the said agreement. And the point they are saying is that it's of concern uh, to the opposition MPP because uh, it's just some two days to the election and they are saying that they cannot stop but wonder why with just less than two weeks to this year's polls, why government will want to enter into a $300 million uh, agreement with the company or with the aim of supplying some equipment to national security. Now, the point he makes is that this is not a credible campaign, and his reason is that this is a company he posted to was registered at somewhere in April this year. He says the company was formed by a Ghanaian in conjunction with two other uh, British citizens, and the point he's making is that he's very disappointed about uh, the fact that a certain agreement has been entered into. The other suspicion as a party is that all forms a part of a grant scheme on the part of the incumbent government to ensure that they have enough funds to undertake the re-election bid of President John Dramani Mahama. Also, the bit about the borehole, they are saying that this is some borehole that has cost some 18,000 cities, but they are saying that PRC, in conjunction with government, has inflated the prices. Also, they say they have enough funds to undertake their campaign between. What else can you report from this press conference? Uh, so essentially, between they are saying that it is important for the people of Ghana uh, to take notice of all that has transpired. They are saying that times are hard. These are moments where people are not being, workers are not being paid. They talk about workers embarking on strike action, among others. And they are saying that this is a government that is spending so much and raising so much money, not with the intent of help, helping the ordinary Ghanaian, but all in the aim of raising some funds to undertake their own activities. For which reason, they are the view that Ghanaians should vote against President John Mahama in this year's post. Thank you very much, Joseph Akable, reporting live from a press conference organized by the opposition New Patriotic Party. Businessman Alfred Wormer has lashed out at the media for vilifying him. Speaking with Francis Aban on John News's analysis program, The Pause, Mr. Wormer said the negative public reaction he has been enduring for the past five years has been as a result of poor publicity the media has put his image through. According to him, some of the big news headlines bearing his name are sponsored by the paymasters of these media houses. He made particular reference to communications director of the MPP, Nanakumia, whom Mr. Wormer claims is always attacking his personality for fear of being exposed by him. For Mr. Wormer, for being part of the S. Walker Force government who caused him the shame. Insulted President Kufo. I will never insult anybody. I will not. And you heard it. It's so you were asking how do we leave? I have to behave nicely and I have to respect the institutions. The president Kufo is our former president, a president of the Republic of Ghana. If I have to say something about it, I should rather stop being a Ghanaian. I will do that. that. So President Rollins, based on his own information, but by the court proceedings, what has happened? The Court of Appeal says that. All the things that the government officials have done was correct and legal. Court of Appeal is saying that the contract on which I was paid was different from the contract of 
uh, what have you, which is 2006. Mm. Court of Appeal says that I, I was paid rightly. And Court of Appeal pointed their, their hand towards that memo. Now, Court of Appeal arrived at those decisions because evidence were taken, witnesses spoke, every other person from across board, MPP, NDC, procurement board, every other person. And they had opportunity to analyze that and was able to arrive at this situation. It does not mean if that hot court appeal had, if it were available to the Supreme Court, mm. I knew the decision would not be like this. How was my the money shared? Shared. shared? How are the 51 million Ghana? Uh, because we are still going on that same uh, diabolism and everything like that. Is my that money, my money, my own money, I have a right to spend my money the way I want to spend my money. It's my money. So, so, far I've to so the now. money has been spent. Excuse me. I spend my money does not mean I can spend all my money. It doesn't mean I'm a poor man or a papa. If you don't have cash now, it means you don't have cash. It doesn't so, mean so, that I'm a papa. Uh, so that's where I'm sorry. So you are spending this time here with the document that I've, I've got now. Mm. I've sent it to all my partners and friends. So and you spend the 51 million Ghana Spend the 51 million Ghana How do you mean by spend the 51 million? I'm asking. You just said it's your money. You know, you, you are really know how to use it. You understand this is not journalism. Mm -hmm. I've come. I will teach you properly. I, I don't think I want the VJ to start teaching people. This is not how it is done. You are practicing something that is alien to this profession. I have just told you that money is paid and that vendors have been paid and everything. You say you spend. You spend. You are still coming back to diabolism. Why do you want to do that? Ghanaians respect them, your own viewers. Mm. They want to hear the truth. Okay. So you won't tell us how you spend the money. You see? You can carry that as your headline. <laughs> you won't tell us. Five years, you've done a lot of things. Did I mind? I've taken you people to court for contempt. Mm. You see? It, it, I was forced to do that. Because the, you, you cannot sit here and say that the court, our justices, in the, uh, the court, what does we call you to me? I should have been the one to be sorted up. I have never. So, I respect them. But so you, you them. use your network here. Mm -hmm. People stood here and said that the, uh, the Court of Appeal justices have their ruling turned Ghana into a banana republic and all that. It hurt me. And as I said, I will defend the court with all my blood, my everything. Mm -hmm. I have sent you this FM station, uh, uh, this station, and other stations involved, and some particular individuals, mm. I've sent it to the uh, to, to, okay. to court so on Thursday. You see? Okay, so just before I ask my I final question. Be, sorry, Mr. Remy, just before I ask my final question. There are some who say that you've had cause to, for how you put it, tell us the truth, because there is an albatross going around your neck that albatross. is tightening up by now. Albatross. This, what has been done by you, this media, who have been misdirected. I don't want to accuse you. You know, I don't want to accuse you. I, I, I don't want to. We've not reached there yet. You see? We will never get there. We will get there. Are we not there? Just, uh, five years. Am I not here talking to Ghanaian? Mm -hmm. I'm talking to Ghanaian because I've respected the court and the systems must work. So I'm talking. So when other cases also have finished with evidence, mm. then those myths. Mr. Weber, sorry, your hands. No problem, no problem, my brother. Do, do, don't worry, don't worry. It's, it, you know it's hot. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> those myths will be debunked. Mm. You see, I, I have said that a lot of Ghanaians reacted the way they reacted because of the information you people chain on them. Okay. Day in, day out. Sunday inclusive. Morning, afternoon, evening, consistently, persistently, and funded. You because you, because to make sure you that are not you with the information where we ask for it. Should I also be part of you putting our institution down? Once matters are in the court, and then I come and be talking about it, simple court reportage. You go there, you pick just extremist ones, and then you come and make a headline and start making concert. That's, that's what you exactly. You've made concert for five years. I'm just standing. So now, so so what you're giving us today is the real deal. What I'm saying here, if it is wrong, let any one of them come. Mm -hmm. I was telling you something about Akumia. Akumia like that. He what did you do? Cool. Akumia was part of the 28 members of the cabinet that put it. Akumia thinks that I'm pushing that uh, 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 they, they should go after them. So Akumia is defending himself. Defending himself how? Yes, because part of the uh, 38 members of the cabinet of Kufo in Akosu who caused this illegality. So people who are talking, one of the, anybody who come in, I know who they are. So I don't want to even go there. You don't think that I am a politician. No, Akumia, don't stop. You are my brother. You are my brother. I am not running for a post. 
I am not running for anything. Anything about me, it is the NDC people who first of all took me to their place anyway. It is the NDC people who, who did all this thing. So why do you take it and then destroy the chances of... Are you party? ready to face Mr. Amido in court on Thursday? The court has said that we should come. So we go there and we we'll go to court. face him. I'm not ready, but I'm obeying the court, not Amido. Mm. They say I'm a witness of the court. But he will examine you. Well, let's see whether the law allows that. When we read that, we'll see. You see, we have a, 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 a constitution written by the people. If a soldier discusses like that, if the other judges agree that it should go like that, I don't care, we go. Why not? What is it? Something that Amidu himself used Yoko to get. Something that he served with. Something that he knows about. I will not sit here and say anything that should have happened there. I won't do that. I'm respectful of the court. I disagree with their judgment on me. Mm. And I said I will fight it and fight it and fight it until this abatros, let me borrow your word, mm -hmm. which have been hung on me and Ghanaians. Is it on your neck? Are you feeling it? No, it's on your neck, my neck. <laughs> the judges who pass it, their own neck. Because it is the Supreme Court. Now, members of the Concerned Teachers Association of Ghana have given the government up to the end of this month to pay salary arrears owed its members, else the government risks losing their vote. At a press conference held in WA, the Upper West Regional Chairman of the Association, Amhassan Abdallah Salifu, noted that government for the past three years has failed to fulfill part of its obligations. The frustrated members are venting their anger on the leadership accusing it of being in bed with the government. They have therefore called on their members in the country to vote against the governing National Democratic Congress if they fail to pay the arrears before the end of the month. Rafiq Salam has the rest of the story. According to the Consent Teachers Association of Ghana, some teachers in the country for the past four years or more have been demanding all manner of salary arrears from the government. These arrears came as a result of government's policy to pay newly recruited teachers only three months of their salaries, irrespective of how many years or months they will have worked as teachers. This, according to the government, is to enable the controller and accountant general to eliminate payroll fraud. This, the Consent Teachers Association of Ghana said, they have fought against in view of the dying consequences it will have on the poor teacher. Al Hassan Abdallah Salifu is the upper West chairman of the Consent Teachers Association of Ghana. It has been three months now since the last tranche of arrears were paid. In fact, Upper West, only 16 teachers received their, 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 their arrears, which was very, very unfortunate. This has left the affected teachers in limbo as to whether government will honor its promise of clearing the backlog of areas or not. Affected members are frustrated and hence keep venting their frustration on executives. Some have even gone to the extent of accusing us of being in bed with government to deny them their due. Yeah. Yes. Their situation noted that since all negotiations and appeals to the... Stay with us.